I was approached recently after, uh, in the wake of Michael Sam coming out to tell my story and to share it with people. And I ultimately decided to share my story because um, I like to help people. And I know through my story, um, hopefully I can inspire someone and maybe some LGBT teen who's out there who's struggling with their sexuality and maybe even suicidal, maybe this message, the message that from my story and from Michael Sam and from other people uh, who have similar stories, maybe that will be enough to pull them out of the depression, um, or at least out of the suicidal thoughts, and realize that there is hope and there is light at the end of the tunnel. I originate from a very small town of 1,600 people in northeast Nebraska, called Pierce, Nebraska. Um, I came out to my parents and to all my best friends when I was 17 in this very small conservative town. And um, initially, um, there was there was struggles with family, and in the end, everything turned out well, and they loved and accept me. But that is uh, for another time, another story. Going to college, I was a little scared how people were going to um, respond to me being an openly gay man um, at a Division I uh, college with one of the best football programs in the history of college football. Um, I wasn't going to jump back into the closet because I have always believed that being true to myself and being honest with myself and who I am as a person is very important to me. So I went in openly gay and I made a decision to, you know, I'm just going to be myself, and if someone asks me I'm gay, so be it. I will tell them, give them an honest answer. And the first two and a half, three months of college were a little rocky because no one had asked me if I was gay. And um, I would walk into the student athlete ski, and um, everyone would start talking and whispering. And I assumed, you know, maybe it's a, some of some of it's about me, and maybe they're you know thinking, oh, here's the, the gay kicker, but. Um, I just let it slide, and I was very lucky to make um, two really good friendships with um, two teammates on on my team, um, Corey McEwen and Sean Hill. And just so happened one day at lunch in Hewitt, we were sitting there, and Corey and Sean just look over at me, and they're like, so pretty boy, we have a question for you. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I know what this is. Um, and Corey, I think it was Corey anyway, says, are you gay? I just look up, up at him with a smile, and I'm like, yeah, so what? Is there a problem? And both Corey and Sean smiled and said, um, no, it's fine. We thought so. We just, you know, wanted to know. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then we just went about, you know, our rest of our random conversation that I don't even remember at this point now. And it was probably one of the easiest coming out times I ever had to do. But from then, um, the team opened up to me pretty pretty readily. Due to Corey and Sean, um, they were very popular on the team, and everyone loved them. And I think some of my teammates realized that, oh well, if they can love him and accept him for who he is, and you know, and not consider homosexuality as anything to judge him by or not to be friends with him by, um, why can't I? And so the team slowly started to open up to me, um, as did some of my coaches. It, it wasn't all easy though because there were coaches that um, made it known to me that um, I wasn't very welcome. Um, a lot of it was through nonverbal communication, um, but there were some verbal things here and there. And um, then there were some very, very homophobic teammates um, initially. And that was very hard. I was incredibly scared at times, especially in the first half year. You know, seeing some of these um, teammates of mine who are, you know, hundred pounds bigger than me and um, <laughs> could crush me if they wanted to, hearing them say homophobic comments like queer and um, fag and stuff like that behind my back or just blatantly to my face. Um, you know, I was legitimately scared for my life at times uh, as a game, but um, I set out to prove them all wrong. I, I first and foremost wanted to show them that, you know, I'm here not because I'm a king man at all, but because I am a, a great athlete, just as they are. So I set out to prove that to them in um, 
on and off the field, in conditioning. You know, I was never the, the fastest and most agile person, but I was, uh, I'd be damned if I was going to, you know, lose a sprint. And, um, I would work out extra hard in the weight room, and then I'd go to the, the campus rec center and work out even more. And I think through that, um, showing my teammates that, you know, I'm here and I'm someone that is a great athlete as well, as well as just by me being me and never hiding anything from them, um, it was easier for them to ultimately accept me. Eventually, those homophobic players came around and um, welcomed me, and I'll never forget the time, there was a time where one of the players, a big lineman, I'm not going to mention any name, who Initially, I was scared to death of, um, and was very homophobic. He, about a year after I had been there, he came up to me at a party and um, just very happily greeted me. And he's like, hey, Lush, um, what you doing? And I'm like, just out having fun. I'm like, it's actually my birthday. And he's like, oh, happy birthday. And he hands me a bottle of Crown Royal and puts his arm around me and, um, you know, he's like, oh, take it, take it, it's yours, it's your birthday. And he's like, you know, I just want you to know that I was a homophobe. And I was very uncomfortable being around you. And I thought, you know, I was going to be, be your ass um, at one point. I didn't know how I was going to be around you every day for the rest of my career at Nebraska. But then he said, you know, through getting to know you, I realized that you are not the stereotype that what people like to say gay is. Ultimately, you're, you're just a really nice guy. You're fun to be around. You're funny. You're cool. And I just want you to know that if anyone ever has any problem with you, um, says anything bad to you, you know, let me know, and me and the guys will take care of it. And that story, you know, that experience will forever hold a very uh, special place in my heart. Sorry. Because at that moment, I really realized that, you know, if I never got the playing time, if I never saw the field, um, you know, if I never got the opportunity, it was okay because I did something bigger than anyone ever could at the University of Nebraska. I wasn't going to live a lie. I wasn't going to live in fear. I was going to be me. And I want everyone out there in the world to know that you can be yourself in any difficult situation. I mean, even in the locker room of Nebraska football, you can be openly gay and you can be loved and accepted. Ultimately, I had to prove myself in order to eventually get the, the chance to be a front runner for the start of the kicking position. It took me two years until I really got my opportunity. And unfortunately, in that fall camp, I was accidentally roughed by a fellow teammate and um, partially tore my other hamstring. That injury left me out for about 14 practices. And they rushed me back into playing a little too quickly, wasn't fully myself, and by that point they'd already wrote me off. Unfortunately for me, at the end of that season, after a spring conditioning session, I um, had always struggled with back problems, but after we did some sprints and stuff, and at the end of the sprints we did an ab workout, I couldn't get back up, and I realized I have to get this checked out. Doctors told me that um, I had a severe spondylolisthesis, and I would need um, a spinal fusion in my lower L5-S1 region. I saw numerous doctors, all of them said the same thing, so ultimately I had to have a spinal fusion, and that was the end of my career. So I, I'll never forget the day I went in and talked to Coach Callahan, who was then the, our head coach at Nebraska, and um, had to tell him the news that my career was over and I needed back surgery. I was staring up, I was very emotional, and I'll never forget looking across the desk. And seeing him shedding a tear. 
And that was another very powerful moment for me. Because I knew, I knew I was, at that point, fully accepted for who I was as a person, and that my sexuality was not anything that defined me. And my coaches and my player and my fellow teammates no longer considered that as a defined um, characteristic of myself. And people loved and respected me for who I was and for my, you know, character and my morals and values. And that meant the world to me. And I'll never, ever forget that. Again, my football career ended um, due to the back surgery, but I did something on a much larger scale by just being me. And so, for anyone who is out there, gay, straight, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, um, please do not live in fear. Life starts on the other side of fear. Um, always be yourself and you know, please be inspired by my story, Michael Sam's story, and all the other stories I'm sure you're hearing, have heard, or will hear. Because life is so much better than, you know, the hard times that you may be facing right now. It does get better. It truly does. And currently, I'm, I'm trying to help people as much as possible through um, getting my PhD in biomedical engineering, but there were times where I could have been a statistic. Um, Back when I was growing up, it was very difficult. Um, very easily, I could have become another teen suicide, um, or become one another um, troubled teen who ends up in jail. I I was close to both of those things, and through all my hardships in life, uh, growing up and on the football team and college, being open and gay, I. I would never, ever, in a million years, trade any of that for the world. Because, ultimately, it has made me stronger than I could ever imagine. It has put me in a place in life where I can help people with my story and with my experiences. And ultimately, that's what I want to do. I want to give back. I want to, I want to, I want to help as many people and inspire as many people as I possibly can. So, stay strong, um, and just remember that love conquers hate, and it does truly get better.